All right, Ron, I'm very excited about this next series. As you can tell, very tired. I uh, try to keep the energy up uh, as long as I can. I know that you slept all night. I haven't, so I'm counting on you a lot, especially just for this first uh, video of this new series. Iva gave us the idea to roll out, give each assistant coach and then Gino their own episode, give each player their own episode, and that's exactly what we're going to do. This should take us well into – I'm guessing mid July. Cause I know we're going to drop some other episodes too between now and then. Um, with that said, we're not going to go straight into every single video of this series, but what we're going to do is again, give an individual video to each player and then each coach. And today starting out, we have assistant coach, uh, and that is Morgan Valley, Ryan. We expect her to return for the 22, 20, season <clears throat> i saw that she entered her first season as an assistant coach on gino Ariema's staff uh this past season so i guess the good news there is ryan she's not coming into her first year this season coming up so you you want to always I, I always say you know experience matters and that's definitely a plus uh she she has a lot under her belt and uh hopefully we get to see morgan valley back with uh gino Ariema this new season coming up yeah i mean experience it all is good and she definitely has a lot of experience and i'll get into that a little bit uh but she replaced shay ralph last year as a newest member of the huskies assistant coaches and like, like we mentioned we'll get into uh the other two assistant coaches and of course gino and all the players so it should be fun it should be fun to go through all the coaches and players and give them their own each individual episode before the regular season starts. So, but Valley actually played for the Huskies for four seasons. She was in the class of 2000 that included Ashley Battle, Maria Conlon, Jessica Moore, and Diana Tarasi. Uh, so she was a part of those three national championship teams last two seasons. Uh, her team went undefeated, but uh, Valley didn't really play that much due to injuries throughout her college career. But in her assistant coaching career, it's quite a long list, so uh, I'll try to be pretty quick with it. But after she graduated, she joined Gina's coaching staff as an assistant for one year. She then spent two years as a full-time assistant with Holy Cross. After that, she spent one season in Durham, followed by a season in Towson. 2010, she joined the UMass staff for an uh, assistant coaching role for four seasons, and then uh, her big her big break came in 2014 when she got hired by Virginia Tech, uh, but only for one season. And then she kind of got a little bit bigger. Uh, she moved west to Washington for two years, and then uh, Washington actually reached the Final Four, made it to the Sweet 16. And then 2018, she joined Arizona, helped them uh, bring some big name recruits. I think it was actually. Uh, at the time, it still might be one of their biggest recruiting classes of all time in program history. So that was pretty cool. She got to be a part of that. Uh, and then Arizona actually won the, the women's invitational tournament that same year. Uh, so it was pretty cool. She got to experience all those things already being a part of the tournament. So she brings a lot of experience already. 2019, she got hired by Hartford. It was her first head coaching experience, head coaching job. Uh, and it, but it, it didn't go quite to to plan. She went 0 and 28. That the Hartford, uh, Hartford team went 0 and 28 her first season. But they they did win the season finale. But in 2020, the season got canceled after only 12 games due to COVID. So the the team just decided to shut down after 12 games. But uh, she called a break. She re-signed uh, from Hartford last season, and of course joined Gina's. Uh, staff as an assistant coach last season so hopefully UConn can provide a little bit of stability uh, for Valley and, and hopefully she can stay here for a pretty long time and, and help the Huskies like I said she brings a a lot of a lot of coaching experience to this team I believe about 13 or, or 14 years uh, of coaching that, that I just mentioned but of course her her only stint was those four years and then all the rest were for about only one to two years. So hopefully she can stay for a little bit longer here in UConn. I know she brings a lot of experience. And it's also good to, to especially bring a player in that, that's already been a part 
uh, of a, a UConn Husky that, that already graduated and kind of knows how it looks from a player's perspective. Yeah, again, that's Morgan Valley, assistant coach, UConn Huskies, uh, entering her second season, it looks like. Um, I'm guessing that she will return. What I like about these, especially assistant coaches, um, is uh, the fact of the matter, obviously, head coach is head coach, right? Big boss man. But then um, what I like about these assistant coaches, like I, I guess, you know, I'm assuming, no, you don't have to really play basketball during your younger years, but I really like the fact if you get hired, especially as an assistant coach, like I, I like the fact that if you had that strong playing experience, I think that'll help the the actual players on the roster a lot more uh, for various reasons. Um, but yes, again, um, you know, I'm not saying a lack of knowledge for people that did not play the sport. I'm not saying that because a lot of coaches went in to prove that, hey, you don't have to play the game to know it and to be great as a coach. But at the same time, Ryan, how many coaches have we saw that has been great and they have played the sport during their younger years. Uh, so it could go either way. I, I'm still leaning on the debate uh, on the edge that it helps if you played the sport during your younger years, uh, just as knowledge, uh, having having just a, a little bit of an edge over the ones that did not play uh, during their younger years. With that said, you know, like you mentioned, as a player for UConn from 2000 to 04, Valley was a member of the 02, 03, and 04 championship teams. I mean, how much experience can you ask for, right? Including the 01 and 02 undefeated season. She appeared in 108 games at UConn and totaled 282 points and 263 rebounds. So I don't know. She says she graduated from UConn uh, with a degree in human development and family studies. So there you go. I mean, <laughs> you have that's a full blooded UConn Husky right there, right? How much more could you ask for? Yeah, I mean, especially because she got to experience March Madness as a player and then multiple times as an assistant coach. And then she got the, the head coaching role for two years. And, of course, that didn't go well, but she already has all this experience. She has already experienced pretty much everything. She was a scout. Uh, she helped scout players. She helped players uh, get ready before games. And she knows what it's like to – you know, be recruited from high school and come up as a, as a UConn Huskies player. And she played with Diana Taurasi. So uh, that that's already a whole lot of experience that uh, not many players got to experience in the first place. So uh, I think she can definitely help out all the UConn Huskies uh, that are seniors and especially the upcoming freshmen that we'll see in years to come. I think she can really help them kind of just ease into the process a little bit more and get them used to the system of course, already playing in Gino's system. That helps out a lot, too. I'm sure it's, of course, changed over the years, uh, 22 years later. But uh, it definitely helps out that she's already used to Gino and kind of knows his ways a little bit. So I would definitely say experience helps a lot. And I don't think for one second, I, I don't think that you were even thought of before uh, or during her uh, playing career, 2000 to 04. No, no. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, uh, let me just take a step back there. I'm not calling her old. Sorry if she sees this. Uh, Morgan Valley is not calling her old, uh, Ryan. Uh, you're pretty young, Ryan, so we'll leave it at that. But, uh, yeah, you, you weren't even thought of back when she was actually playing on the floor, so that's pretty wild. Um, yeah, so with that said, um, and I, I, by the way, just a side note, I love her shirt, uh, UConn versus the world, her Nike yeah, shirt I saw and her that. Uh, profile. Yeah. You know, being one of the best teams in the nation, basketball capital of the world, but you still wear a shirt like that, you know, UConn versus the world. I told you, Ryan, you know what? That's living proof. Do not count any team out. Any team at any given day uh can defeat you and and we see it all the time we, we preach it on this podcast but not not a lot of people believe it until it happens huh yeah i mean we, we definitely saw it last year with, with their them losing as many games as they did it and i don't know how many years but uh definitely any team at, at any single moment you just never know that that's what a, a really really good thing and about sports is any team can beat you at, at any given moment so um, yeah, I mean, it's always exciting, but Valley, I, I think she'll hopefully be a part of the, the Huskies for years to come, maybe work her way up. 
Uh, of course, you probably can't get as much higher as an assistant coach until uh, Gino leaves, but you never know. We'll, we'll see what happens. With that said, comment time, Ryan, on the last video. We'll see what Ryan has to say on these comments. Uh, it was from June the 14th, so two days ago when we had the episode UConn Huskies transfer, Lou Lopez fitting in great. That's exactly what we wanted to hear when she transferred to UConn. Ryan, first up, let's get started on Iva, huh? Since she gave us this idea to start this series. Lou is kind of similar to Caroline. I like Lou, and I think she will be impactful, but I do prefer Caroline. Caroline did carry the team a lot last season, and she showed that she is a smart player. So, guys, when are you going to discuss one player per episode? <laughs> I would like to see what you think they can bring and where to improve in their game. Waiting on my Nika time. Not enough is said about her. Well, you finally, the series is underway, Ryan. So, right after these coaches get crossed off the list, you got the roster coming up. Yeah, surprise. It started. Today's the day. The list has started. Right. So uh, we'll get to the players soon enough. But uh, I think that's the case with a lot of UConn Huskies fans, as, as we learn throughout these episodes, throughout the season and the offseason, that, that a lot of people prefer Caroline Ducharme over a lot of the UConn Huskies. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've mentioned Nika before. I had her in the starting lineup when we were going over our prediction way that was that's probably been a month ago now almost uh predicting that the starting lineups way before the season I had Nika in there just because of her intensity and defensive effort she doesn't really score a lot but she doesn't have to she impacts the game in so many different ways but Carolina is definitely a very offensively gifted player uh she's a very solid defensive player I believe as well um, and especially dealing with the hip, hip injury all last season. So uh, you, everybody knows that she can only go up and up from here, and her ceiling uh, is way up here. So she can even improve a whole lot more, even though you know she had a great season last season. Uh, she can improve a whole lot more. How about Fred Hurricane? Fred Hurricane. Thanks, Fred, for coming through. That's a new name. I haven't seen this one yet. Team USA wins second game 94 to 38 over Puerto Rico in the FIBA U18 America's Championship. Ice Brady scored four, scores 14 points to follow up her 17 points against Colombia. Uh, McMahon led with 16 points and Del Rose, Rosario with 14 points. I hope UConn can get Del Rosario. Go Team USA. Aloha. You guys are the best. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate the <laughs> update, too. I did see that game where Ice Brady saw, uh, scored 17 points against Colombia, but I, I didn't see the, the Puerto Rico game, so I'll have to watch some highlights on that game if I can. But, yeah, it's definitely exciting watching Ice Brady, a future UConn Husky, coming in uh, in the next couple weeks after she gets done with USA, uh, scoring all these points and – uh, just just playing with, with all our teammates. So it's definitely exciting to see uh, the future UConn Husky playing on a U.S. state team. So I can't wait till she gets to stores, gets to play and practice with her teammates and uh, excited to see what her role will be on, on the UConn Huskies this season. Uh, that's right. How about Grobel? There he is, our one of our regulars. Grobel, thanks for coming through for 2023 uh, for 2023-24 season, the Big East Conference is likely going to 18 conference games from 20. UConn will thus have two more out of our out of conference games versus higher high quality opponents over some of the lower tier teams in the league. Some of the lower tier teams will be happy to only see UConn once a year. Interesting, the same type of reduction happened when UConn was in AAC. They went from 18 to 16 conference game. In contrast, conferences like ACC, Pac-12, Big Ten are at or are going to 20 games conference schedules. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm sure that'll make some of the people happy that that say all the time that UConn plays in the weakest conference and whatnot. But I, I thought it was interesting when we were going over the schedule there the past couple of weeks. Uh, I, I thought maybe that the UConn was playing a couple more non-conference games, playing Maryland, Florida State, I think Notre Dame's on there again, Tennessee. So it'll definitely be another interesting year of non-conference games. I always 
really excited for all their games, but especially non-conference because you, you really don't know what to expect. You always play your conference teams every single year, but it's always kind of fun to see these different non-conference teams on a schedule. Uh, I know we're going to the Maryland game, so that'll be fun. But uh, Florida State, of course, Notre Dame was a good game last year. Uh, and Tennessee, you know, the UConn beat them last year. Uh, and hopefully uh, South Carolina will, will be on there as well. I'm pretty sure uh, they're expected to be on the schedule. So that, that'll be really fun to watch for that rematch. Jerry Asher, 42. I always wind up watching your broadcast a day or two later. How do you find you live? Well, I tell you, we don't go live because in case Ryan starts tearing up the Yukon Huskies too much. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but no, we, we're going to stick to this kind of format for now. You know, Ryan and I has discussed, Ryan, we talked about going live for like actual, uh, the bigger games, like March Madness, um, actually having like one hour stream or Actually, the games take two hours, so we'll be in front of the computer uh, watching the game on TV, right, on mute, but then we'll be talking about it as it goes along. We, it's, you know, we're just starting, so it's a lot of stuff planned out. I can't wait to see where it takes us, Ryan, but I know we have talked about going live um, and actually seeing live comments drop in and, and analyzing them uh, right on the air, like right as soon as it's like people, you know, you're talking to them, so – yeah, uh, geriatric 42, that's a good idea. Uh, but for now, Ryan, I guess we'll keep it. I tell you, if he does hit the bell, the ding button, uh, you can definitely get all the notifications there, Ryan. And as soon as we drop a video, he doesn't have to wait a day or two later. He can watch it right there. Yeah, right. Click that bell, you'll get notifications <laughs> as soon as we post the video. But, yeah, like you mentioned, we, we talked about doing it in the past, and maybe maybe we'll, we'll see about it th this upcoming season, like you mentioned uh, for, for the bigger games, maybe for a, a Sweet 16, Elite 8, Final Four game, one of those types of games. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll discuss it some more. But it would definitely be uh, probably a lot of fun to go live, read, read live comments, have live reaction uh, towards the game. So we'll, we'll definitely discuss it some more. How about Fred Hurricane again, Ryan? Last one for today. I think Lou, Pe uh, I think Lou Lopez – Senechal uh, is the perfect fit. She has a skill set and size to play small forward or guard. She would fit right into the role Avina had last year. Keep up the good work, guys. You guys never disappoint. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I mean, like you mentioned, I mean, the whole video was about her fitting in great. So I, I think she's a great fit on this team. And, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of compared her a little bit to it to a Avina Westbrook saying that uh, whether she's in the starting role or coming off the bench, much like Avina did last season, she always found a way to impact the game, whether it's with their three point shooting, driving to the basket, getting rebounds, steals, creating turnovers. She always found a way uh, to make an impact and, and raise the intensity level and energy level of her teammates. So I yeah. think Lou Lopez can kind of do the same exact thing for the Huskies this season. Next up on the list for this series, Ryan, Jamel Elliott, assistant coach. We'll break uh, this assistant coach down and tell everybody what we think about her. Uh, I'm seeing some, again, some uh, uh, great information on her. She graduated from Connecticut in 96 with a degree in business management. She earned her master's in sports management from UConn in 97. I won't read any more, Ryan. We don't want to get into it now. We'll say that. Have a uh, one special video for Jamel Elliott Ryan. It's a no wonder. I tell you, we talk about the players going to UConn being some of the best of the best out of high school, and now it just seems like we're only on number two uh, for assistant coaches in this coaching staff. Man, it seems like Gino uh, picks the best of the best for the coaches as well, huh? Yeah, and it seems like he, he likes to have the, the coaches that come from his system that have already there go, been there yeah. before and, and had that experience. So starting to see a little bit of a pattern. And that does it for Thursday, Ryan. The weekend quickly approaching is Phil and Rye on Listen Up.